I've had this Bluetooth speaker for a while now and it's looking a bit tatty and also I'm just getting really annoyed with Bluetooth like it just doesn't have a very long range like so you walk away from it and you just instantly lose it. So I want to take this Bluetooth speaker and turn it into an AirPlay speaker and while I'm at it I'm going to give it a style makeover so it looks like a nice desirable object to have rather than just a tatty old Bluetooth speaker. So that's the plan, let's see how it goes. First up, let's get into this. Oh, it's probably one of the most difficult things I've had to get into. There's so much sticky tape and glue. Uh, you can just see all the hot glue that's holding everything together. It's really nasty. I've tried to get as much of it off as possible, but there's still quite a bit of residue. I've got all the electronics out and I thought I'd try and get rid of the shiny surface by just sanding it down. Unfortunately, I sanded it a bit much and it actually went through to a slightly different finish underneath the gloss. A quick respray later and yeah, that's a pretty nice finish. I'm pleased with it. Here's the board for the auxiliary inputs, the on and off switch and the micro USB socket that acts as a power feed. I'm going to replace the switch, change the micro USB socket to something else and I need to feed into that auxiliary input for the sound. And this is what will be making the sound. It's a Raspberry Pi Zero W with a very nice audio DAC shim from my friends at Pimeroni. There's an open source AirPlay system for the Raspberry Pi called SharePort Sync. I've installed it on here and I've also made the Linux system read only, which should help to make it a bit more reliable long term. I've added links in the description if you want to find out more about those things. So now it's time to sort out the power. I don't want to use the micro USB socket. I really hate them. They're always the first things to break. Like how many micro USB sockets have I repaired? So what I've got instead is this really cheap step down converter. It has a wide range of inputs between three and 40 volts and it can output anything between one and a half to 35 volts. You see that trim pot there? You can use that to adjust the output. So I've adjusted this to give me exactly five volts, which is what I need. Then I can just attach like a DC jack to the other side and I can be fairly sure that any power supply will work with this. I've also found some other bits and pieces like these panel mount LED lights. They're pretty fun. I've got a set of five of those. You've probably seen them before, but they're new to me. I think they're replacements for like motorbikes and boats and stuff and uh, probably replacements for like incandescent versions of these because I've noticed that you can wire these around anyway uh, and they work fine on 5 volts even though they were advertised as 12 to 24 volts. So it'd probably be interesting to pull these apart and understand them a little bit more. But yeah, for me, I like the look of them and they're so easy to use. And finally, I've got this fancy power switch. So I can replace the three buttons on top of the Bluetooth speaker with this power switch, two lights, add a DC jack in the side connected to this power converter and we're good to go. So wiring up the voltage converter and this is the input side so that's going to the DC jack and then wiring up the output side and that goes directly into the main board of the speaker. I've plugged in a power jack and I'm just bridging the on off switch contacts to make sure that the power comes on. And those lights flashing means that it's all fine. I've plugged a jack cable between the Raspberry Pi and the original jack interface and the audio is working. But there is this weird thing, it's like a ton of interference. I'm pretty sure this is caused by a ground loop because the ground on the Raspberry Pi is connected to the ground on the main amplifier board. 
I know there are a few different ways to deal with this, but I thought I'd just go for the easiest, which is one of these off the shelf ground isolators. I've given it a quick test and it seems to work, but it's a bit too big to fit inside the enclosure. So let's pull it apart and see what's inside. It's just a couple of coils, one for each channel. I'm going to spend a bit of time just making sure there's enough space in here for everything. I'm really running out of room. Now I'm going to wire up the audio and this requires three wires, one for common, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. And I'm going to use my favorite trick of twisting wires together using a cordless drill. The insulation on these wires is made of silicon. I really love working with this. Uh, you can't melt it with a soldering iron, so it's really easy to use. I'll put a link in the description. I've traced where the audio signals come in from the board with the audio jack socket on it. And now I'm gonna just solder these three wires directly to those connections. usually good at Tetris but I'm having trouble fitting everything inside this enclosure there's just there's just no room so I'm going to cut the ends of this ground isolator solder directly to the board and I'm also going to solder directly to the audio jack on the Raspberry Pi. I've saved the best bit until last with this really fun and stylish front panel that I cut on my laser cutter out of oak ply. And here it is, the finished speaker. I think the wood really helps. It's one of my favorite materials to work with. I'll link to it in the description if case you want any. That's the new on off button, pretty chunky. The two lights on top, one is for power and this one is for when you charge it up. It's like the charging lights. Despite the ground loop isolator, I've actually still got a bit of noise coming from that. And I think it's because there's like right by the speaker, there's a coil on the main board. And I just think that's interfering. I could try shifting it around a little bit or maybe I could put like a grounded copper tape over it anyway perhaps you've got some ideas it'd be great to hear them in the comments but other than that it works really great it uses the original battery i should say this speaker i think it's called the onbeat 500 i don't know if you can still get them but if you've got one it's probably a tricky project to work on uh, there's not a lot of space in here but i will provide these laser cut files anyway just in case if you want to see more Raspberry Pi projects or if you want to know more about the setup process for the Raspberry Pi, let me know in the comments. As usual, if you like the video, please like it. It does make a difference and subscribe, hit the bell, all of that stuff. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.